Welcome to this session. We would like to discuss the frequency domain inside behind frequency pulling. Okay, so it's like two frequencies: frequency domain inside for frequency pulling. Okay, so just uh, enjoy this both the frequency terms here. So what we have here is we have this. Uh, mixer based phase error detector and then we have uh, the loop filters with proportional and integral path okay and our VCO okay. So time domain analysis we have already seen now we will look in little bit in frequency domain for frequency pulling. So here what we are having at time instant t equal to 0, we have uh, omega in as omega and omega out which is omega free plus kvco times vc, this is omega free itself. So the frequency error at the beginning is equal to omega minus omega free. Now when you have this frequency error, right? Uh, v in and V out are sinusoidals, we know V error is something as half of sin of omega in plus omega out times t plus sin of delta omega 0 at time instant t, this is what the frequency which you have. So for this particular frequency error, let us look at the frequency spectrum of V error. When you start your system at the beginning, when you start your system, uh, you look at V error spectrum, V error versus omega that has a component at 2, uh, sorry, at delta omega. This component I am neglecting because this I know is going to be filtered by the loop filter. So, we have this component delta omega, fine. When you have a component delta omega at V error, after the loop filter, the one which you are seeing here loop filter, loop filter has two paths proportional and integral. Integral path will actually, integral path will actually filter this out more or less quite most often if the frequency error is large. So, proportional path is going to amplify this because for the proportional path the gain is uh, uh, finite. Okay, so proportional path has gain like this, integral path has gain like this. Okay, so integral path filters out, proportional path gain remains. So what do you get at the output of your loop filter, which is the VC node? You get the same frequency component, maybe amplified with some value, and this is delta omega. Okay, so that is what you have here. So if you look at the magnitude, this is like kpd, and here you have kpd times uh, tau p by tau y. Now, when you have a frequency component at delta omega, what happens to the control voltage? We see here. So control voltage is given by kpd times sine of delta omega zero times t. To begin with, let me just remove delta omega here all the time. This is the frequency error, you have it. Yes. V out is equal to cosine of omega free plus kvco, omega free t times kvco into vc control voltage, which is a function of time. Let me just use uh, another variable, let us say vc of t times dt and this goes from 0 to t. Okay? If it creates any uh, integration issue, so I will just use uh, this just for uh, integration purpose, this is what you have. If you look at this, the, con uh, the control voltage here which you see uh, this here, it changes the VCO frequency and modulates the output signal. How does it modulate? You need to do a little math here. 
this is equal to cosine of omega free times t plus k v c o v c of t is nothing but k p d times sine of delta omega t assuming that uh, during the integration the delta omega remains constant that is an assumption here because we are considering only one frequency omega free t plus k v c o times k p d sin delta omega integral is a sin and cosine delta uh, you know the integral for that you are going to get cosine of delta omega right uh, forget the limits here for now this is delta omega and this is with minus sign. So, I am just uh, doing indefinite integration, you can do definite also. We, the motive here is to find out how this control voltage is going to modulate V out. Okay. So, we will just remove, actually there will be limits you can do with that also. Here I am just going to do it without the limits. Okay. So, there is no problem with that uh, if you do whether uh, with limits or without limits. Okay. The objective here is to find out to uh, find out how this cosine of delta omega will change our uh, output voltage. So, you are having two components one is omega free times t and the other component is k v c o k p d by delta omega into minus cosine of delta omega t. So, I will just rewrite this as cosine of omega free t minus of k v c o k p d by delta omega that is k by delta omega into cosine of delta omega t. Okay. This cos of a minus b is uh, equal to omega free t cos a cos b plus sin a sin b. So, this is k by delta omega times cosine of delta omega whole t plus the other term is sine of omega free t let me apply plus sine here times sine of k by delta omega cosine of delta omega t. Okay. Now, here is one assumption or I will just assume the theta which is equal to k by delta omega into cosine of delta omega times t is very small. Okay. If I make this assumption then we know sine of theta is equal to theta and cosine of theta is equal to 1 approximately. Okay. So, if we do that then our previous V out expression happens to be cosine of omega free t plus sine of omega free t okay, into k by delta omega cosine of delta omega t. This we are doing it for first time, but we will do these things multiple times in PLL. So, that is why I am going through all the steps. You have omega free t plus k by 2 delta omega, you can write it here. You will have 2 sine of omega free t times cosine of delta omega t. Now, apply other ma uh, other identity that this is k by 2 delta omega 2 times sin a cos p is equal to sin a plus p and sin a minus p. So, omega free plus delta omega t plus sin of omega free minus delta omega t. Okay. Okay. So, when we modulate the control voltage of the VCO with frequency delta omega, then at the output of the oscillator V out, we get two more frequencies. One is sin omega free plus delta omega and other sin omega free minus delta omega. All right. So, this implies that I have more frequencies and one of the frequency is omega free for the VCO as it was and the other frequencies are omega free 
plus delta omega and omega free minus delta omega okay and the magnitude of these are k times k by delta omega this is v out okay so when you when we modulated the control voltage with a sine uh, with a sine wave right we modulated the frequency with that the output of the oscillator gives rise to to the, uh, the vco gives rise to two more frequencies omega free minus delta omega omega free plus delta omega so then it comes back at v in v in is still sitting at omega in you did not change v in right so v in is still at omega in okay what is omega in you see from here omega in is nothing but omega free plus delta omega this frequency is actually equal to omega in only so when you multiply these two signals okay one signal is having these three frequency components other signal is having only one frequency component then this multiplication will give rise to more frequency components and what are those more frequency components let us just see here i just do not want that okay you take downward arrow also as a uh, some frequency so let me just avoid this and use maybe a little nice arrow right so you have this omega here omega in is omega free plus delta omega when these two frequencies combine you are going to get the dc component if you are wondering what i am doing is i am multiplying sin omega in right into sin of omega in if i do this then this multiplication is sin square means just we need to write it sin square and sin square is uh, you know sin square is equal to 1 by 2 into 1 minus cosine of 2 omega in so you get two components one component is at higher frequency another component is at dc so this multiplication leads to a component at dc at v error you start with non zero dc component at v error to begin with right because there was no change uh, vc was not there then you come back in the loop and you see how output frequency gets modulated you produce a dc component in addition to this you will have components at delta omega you will have components at 2 delta omega and so on but important part is you are having a dc component and what is there at the output of the loop uh, at the output of v error there is a loop filter which has a proportional path and it has a integral path integral path has infinite gain at dc and you produce a dc component so if you produce a dc component at the input of the loop filter the loop filter has infinite gain at dc it will just amplify it your control voltage will increase by the uh, by a lot of margin and it is going to help you in compensating for the frequency error so this is another way of looking at uh, the frequency uh, acquisition previously we looked at completely in time domain uh, this time we looked at okay how these frequency multiply to give you the dc component and that dc component gets amplified okay so uh, this uh, actually completes our uh, frequency acquisition for the PLL and the similar procedure can be followed for different kind of PLLs. We have only taken a simple example and you can use it for different PLLs. Okay. Thank you.